Steven Universe. You know it. You love it. Some people don't. The glove bracelet has its own page in the Steven Universe wiki, as well as its own um, proper vector art drawing. Uh, you go over here. I remember this. Oh, come on. Scroll down. Scroll down. Hard to do while I'm looking at the phone. Yeah. So it has it has its own its own wiki page. And really nice render art. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. Connie was in some sort of parade. I think it's been a while since I saw the episode. And Stephen was just like, Oh, look, you dropped this and I, I saved it for you. And he put it in the freezer so this way the glow would still stay. Which it, it, Apparently that's a thing. It's a real thing. And I didn't know it until this episode. And that's, a, that's really cool. Um, I tried doing that. It doesn't quite work. Um, it doesn't quite work as well as they showed in the episode. Uh, but, you know, it's a fantasy show. You can have it still work. And it's fun. That doesn't. That's not really the issue here, um, and so he he brings it out, and then she wears it, and it's important for the climax of the episode, as well as showing that like oh he cares, um, but they brought up the angle that it's a little creepy that like he was watching this girl that he kind of likes, then picks up the bracelet and just kind of stores this sweaty cheap plastic thing that you could easily buy another one of, uh, you know. And again, part of it is to show that, like, oh, it's it's really sweet that even something so insignificant, he would he would care enough about her to um, do something like that. But at the same time, they, they were like, it's a little creepy, but he's young enough where it's like, it's fine, it's fine, it's, it's just meant to be cute. And it is cute. It makes for a very cute scene. But I think you can make it cuter with less, like, oh, you dropped this. Because it's not like the bracelet was, like, some sort of, oh, this is a one-of-a-kind charm thing or something like that. And it was like, this seemed like it was really important to you, or, like, you looked really sad when you dropped it. It's just, oh, you were in a parade, I guess she dropped it, and then he just saved it for her. Because um, I, I feel like it would have been really cool if instead, since Stephen generally, um, Greg would, would give the gems money to pay for things, and I believe this was explained off camera, like Rebecca Sugar had said it on Twitter to clarify certain things that were a little confusing, sort of like how that, that random thing that um, Garnet had burned, I don't believe was ever actually explained in the episode what it is, and that's part of the fun of it, where it's just like, oh, what the heck is that? These, these are mysterious things you don't know. But uh, she explained like, oh no, that was ink that was made from ground up gems. Um, and so it had to be burned and, and destroyed, and that's why it kind of came to life and stuff like that. Not understanding what it was was kind of funny, but, you know, that seems like a pretty cool concept. You'd think that they, they would have expanded more on that, uh, and they don't, and they just, it's never explained, so you could just be like, what the heck is that thing? Um, so it's it's weird, it's, it's in a weird limbo where I'm fine with it not being explained, but the explanation is also really cool, but it, it was it was J.K. rowling in, but at the same time, it's not a J.K. Rowling because this is actually good. There are certain things about the world that are that totally make sense and are implied, but you wouldn't entirely get it. Like, um, the way that magic works in this world, which is totally supported by how the characters act, but you look at it and you're like, oh, why, why is this the case? Um, characters know that magic exists, but instead of being naturally like intrigued to understand it, they avoid it. Sort of like, oh, like there's a societal problem that people will just not want to listen to. So they do that with magic. They're like, nope, don't want to get involved. This is the forces beyond my control. Walking away, not doing this. This is some crazy magic stuff. So they, they know it exists and they don't care. That's why nobody cares when Ronaldo actually shows like proof of magic things. Because people are just like, oh yeah, magic exists, but dude, you don't, you don't, you don't touch that. You don't talk about that. You just, you just walk away, you know, which also makes Connie more of an outlier because she actually is interested in all this stuff. She's actually interested in the, the craziness. Um, and, and she's just like, whoa, cool, which I think could have been shown a little bit more in the, their initial meeting where like Connie is, is going closer to some sort of magical thing. And it's just like, whoa, this thing is really cool. They're like, oh man, I, I've seen you guys around before. Um, I know they they told me not to mess with this magic gem stuff, but I've always been interested. Uh, I feel like that would have been a cool thing to introduce in that episode where it's sort of like taboo. Um, and Connie is, is interested because she also likes those, those fantasy books as well. You could kind of make it like, oh, um, th there are some people who are interested in this stuff. 
So I wish they kind of did that sort of an angle, so it seems less like Stephen just kind of randomly likes a girl, and then she just happens to be touched that he saved her random sweaty thing that she dropped from a parade at some point. Um, I, I think it would have been cooler if Stephen didn't have a whole lot of money uh, for, for himself, like most of the stuff that he got was like gifts, like his game, GameCube and other stuff from, from Greg and whatnot. Um, but, like, Stephen had uh, just a tiny little bit of extra money, and he saw that she dropped it, and, like, maybe it broke or the stuff leaked out or something on the street. And she was a little sad and then walked onwards. Um, you could have him mention that. So instead, Stephen would buy, like, a package of the glow sticks, which would also make sense, like, oh, this is why it didn't crack just yet. Um, and why it wouldn't still be glowing. I think it would be sweet that, like, Stephen generally doesn't buy stuff. Um... And the one time he did was because he saw someone who broke a thing and was just like, oh, I felt bad for you. So in case I saw you again, uh, I, I, I got these and kept them on the side or something because I didn't know if I'd see you again. So it feels more like it was someone who he is intrigued with instead of like, oh, look, it's the girl. I'm going to hold on to these, these, these things that was left behind. <laughs> Oops. It just it feels a little less weird that way. Um, but again, it's not it's not gross. It's it's still very cute. Like like um, they had said, it's a little weird, but they're at a young enough age, and he's naive enough to be like, oh, that's cute. It was just meant as a sweet gesture. But I feel like it would have made it a little less awkward. It would also make it so like, oh, Connie is just some random girl. No, both of them would end up having some sort of history, and then you can explain how people generally stay away from magic stuff. And Connie was kind of intrigued, but didn't want to. And she had saw him running around the other side of the beach. And it would just, it would make things a lot cuter that way, you know? Where it, it, it just, it shows that, like, they're brought together instead of, like, oh, Stephen kind of creeped on this girl and got them into trouble and then showed, like, oh, hey, guess what? I was kind of creeping on you. And here's my, the, the bracelet that you dropped that one time. And then she's just like, oh, how quaint. Um... And then they narrowly escape danger and it's exhilarated. It would feel more like they she doesn't know magic. This is why she she realizes, like, oh no, this is why you're not supposed to be around magic. This is terrifying. I'm trapped in the bubble. Um, and now we're under the water, and then there's the monster, it's gonna chase us. It's just like, oh, I shouldn't have gone around magic, this is terrifying. And Stephen shows her the sweeter side of what it's like, and it's like, oh, you're a person, you you have you have these sweet things about you, and you're very human. And then they, they manage to get through it, and then she's um, exhilarated by the thing, and it's like, yeah, I like you, and I want to go on more adventures with you. I feel like that would have been a nicer way to have the scene work. And I also feel like if, if it took a little longer in the episode, you could cut out the thing where Lars just taunts him and licks the side of the bubble or something like that. You didn't need to have the donut scene. There's enough scenes of, of Stephen trying to pop through the bubble. It just, it's it's not enjoyable and makes you hate Lars even more, you know? So you could cut out that scene for time in case all this extra, uh, or some of the extra sentences take up a little too much longer. So those those are my things. Obviously, there's bigger things to rewrite in Steven Universe, but this is something I don't actually see people talk about. And it's just, it, it was something on my mind where it's like, I wish that this was the way that this was written, and I think that would have been cool. So thank you for listening to my madman ramblings, and uh, take care. I wish I had structured this a little bit better, but it's, again, a stream of consci con consciousness sort of thing. Um, and take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>